to log in and uh, you may have to get a verbal vote from you if you're unable to log in. Most, most are. Uh, according to the uh, roll call, we have a quorum present. Moving on to the next item, our prayer will ask our chaplain, uh, Mr. Douglas, to lead in our prayer. I'll ask uh, Commissioner Cullen to release our pledge of allegiance. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as always, we come to you tonight thankful for the community in which we live. Father, we realize the significance of the things we are charged with, and we ask, Father, that we would bring honor and glory to your name with the decisions that we make. Help us in our discussions to be civil and make the decision that would bring honor and glory to your name, not ours, not us, no one here, to you only. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Jesus, the Lord, the I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, to our special call county commission meeting tonight for the purpose of vote on the school. Next item on the agenda is appearance of citizens. I have a list here of citizens who have a request to speak. You're limited to three minutes and uh, there will be a timer on the board. In addition to that, there's been some county commissioners who have received emails that you have been requested to read. As long as that is not someone who is also here speaking, uh, after we get through with the, the in-person comments, you have an opportunity to read the emails that you've been asked to read, and you'll have three minutes on that. So our first uh, person is Michelle Light. If you would come to the podium and state your name and address, ma'am, and you have uh, three minutes once you start. Ridgewood Drive in Jefferson City. Uh, we're actually living in county in the city. Um, so I'm here today um, to discuss this $20 million school funding. Um, we actually chose to homeschool our children, so I really, for all of my life, I really never got involved in any of the politics of the funding or anything like that. Um, what, I only voted once, in fact, for a school board member um, because I didn't I didn't really know the people and I didn't know what they stood for. There was one person in my neighborhood that actually ran at one time and so I did know him and I did vote for him. Um, and then when it came time to call him to ask him did my son play sports uh, for the football team, he said he was against it. So you can imagine <laughs> the one person I did vote for wouldn't even stick up for us. So um, anyway, it was our choice to opt out. We decided to do that for our family. Um, unfortunately, it's not our choice to opt out of the tax burden that anything like this will create. My children are now grown, and now they're working and starting their life as pay tax-paying adults, and they get to help carry this burden and pay for it, too. Um, when we decided to homeschool, we decided that we would live on one income. So we decided that we would make this sacrifice. We felt like it was something that we wanted to do for our family and that we were going to give up some material things for something we felt like was better, a different lifestyle. And it required a budget and it required changing our habits and um, when we even moved here we had to find a house that we could afford. Um, we bought a house that needed, it wasn't exactly like we wanted it, we were going to have to do some things to it, it needed some TLC. And as time went by, we saved up money, we remodeled that house, and we fixed it up. And that's, the, that's what's responsible. We, we didn't want to go into take another home equity loan and go into more debt than we already were, with people that we really just wanted to try to get out of debt. Um, and so we remodeled as we went. Then at times, we didn't have carpet in the basement because some water had, uh, there had been a water problem down there, and so we got that fixed up, and for a while we didn't have any carpet we lived we, we still made, made that um, so 
One of the things I wanted to bring up is I was reading in the paper and it says the proposed Piedmont renovation is not even included in the initial request. And uh, something I was thinking about today that um, in the Bible it talks about nobody goes and builds a tower without really thinking about the cost. And I think and we looked at one cost of one building, but what about the whole scope of things for the whole county? How much is it going to cost for if we build this school, then how much more are we going to be spending later in the renovations of these other schools? So we're looking at 20 million here, but then it's how many millions for this school? How many millions? I know I hate to interrupt you, but your time is up. Oh. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying we need to look at the whole picture, and I hope y'all vote no right now. Thank you for your input. Next person is Andrew Roma. <laughs> Sir, if you'll state your name and your address, and you'll have three minutes. <clears throat> My name is Andrew Romine. I just bought property in Dandridge, Tennessee, 542 Reserve Way. I uh, grew up here in Jefferson County. Uh, Mr. Walker, I guess I didn't know he was on the committee. It's my first time I was speaking for a committee. I'll be brief. Um, as the last speaker spoke, she chose to homeschool her kids. After what's going on with COVID-19, whatever your personal opinion is of it's neither here nor there, but the educational curriculum and everything, not using the schools as we have, I'm probably choosing to go ahead and homeschool my kids. Uh, when I heard about this $20 million debt that you wanted to build a new school, you just built the Patriot Academy in 2013. Is the warranty out on that school yet? I mean, I'm just curious. Like she was speaking before, you want to build this new school, but you've got a school that you just built. Uh, according to numbers I pulled up for this meeting, uh, you've had 1,164 students withdraw this year alone, with another 880 students went into private schools or <coughs> homeschooling. According to your risk assessment finances, you have roughly about 3,200 more students you can actually accommodate on your expe uh, expensive needs assessment. I, I just looked that up this morning. Uh, I think it's kind of useless to build a new school for $20 million. With the economy we have, I don't know how many people here actually work in Jefferson County, but if you're but work in Knox County, the economy is shot right now. We can't afford that. Uh, homeowners, property owners, and business owners, that's going to fall back on us here soon. So I hope everyone would reconsider uh, possibly looking into rezoning the schools. Uh, I know there's some schools that are probably either understaffed or overstaffed, but I have enough kids. May not, but I think we need to look into more options before we just dump a $20 million debt into the citizens of Jefferson County. Thanks. Thank you. Jacob Thompson. Jacob, you'll say your name and address. You have three minutes, sir. Hi there. I'm Jacob Thompson. I 12, live at 1292 Jessica Loop in Jefferson City in District 5. As a citizen of Jefferson County, I just want to express my disinterest in the county going into more debt for a new Jefferson Elementary School. The needs for a new the needs should be prioritized to fix what we have and fix them in that order. Right now, the school is operational. Kids are going to school there every day, so it must not be too bad. I've been in there myself. Yeah, it, it needs some attention. But as far as tearing that one down and building another one, I don't think it needs that. Um, I'm just not in favor at all of our, count, of our county going into more debt to build a school that I really feel like we should have took care of the other one in the first place. Um, secondly, I just want to express my displeasure with the school board uh, wanting to basically evict the tenant they've had for almost 70 years, the fairgrounds. I know there's other property that could be identified as worthy for building a new school, but I don't think it's right to kick them out. They help with agriculture and entertainment and memory making for our citizens. I would just like for you all to entertain the idea of fixing our current schools as we can afford it without going into debt and somehow designate the fairgrounds as a permanent place for the fair. I don't know what the best course of action for that would be, but whatever you all would see necessary. 
I just want to say I appreciate your all's time and your commitment to our county. It really does mean a lot to me because I know what it takes to give your time, you know. So, there have been several people here tonight that have spoken against it. I've not seen anyone for it so far. I don't know what your constituents have told you outside of here, but I've definitely seen a big stand against going into debt. I'm all for a new school. I'd love for us to have new schools when we can afford to do it without going into debt. Thanks, so. sir. Craig Dave. <coughs> Mr. Dave, if you'll give us your name and address, you have three minutes, sir. Absolutely. My name is Craig Day, I'm the principal at Jefferson Elementary School. I live at 512 Oxford Road. I just want to take just a moment and let you know I'm there every day. I've worked in that school now for nine years as the principal. I was a teacher for 10 years. 23 years of my life have been invested at that building, believe it or not. Uh, I'm here with fellow workers from Jefferson Elementary School who also work in the right in the in the school each and every day and we see what happens in the building and the things that we have to do to continue to keep our building running at such a capacity as the students will not realize what we have to do to keep it running um, what I do want to say is the building is 63 years old um, when I was in that building nothing was done to the inner workings of the building as a student, as a student teacher, as a teacher, and now as a principal, other than <coughs> maintenance to help things continue to run. There have been additions and there have been some economical changes with the ceiling lowering, but nothing has been done to the infrastructure of that building. We came here tonight, hopefully, to see a favorable vote from our county commission, but I'm going to stop short and I'm just going to let a couple of other folks from our school uh, share with you their thoughts on the building. I do hope we vote yes. That is uh, what I would like to see tonight for our students. Our students deserve the same as other students in the county across the state. So I just want to share that with you. But uh, we have a teacher here, third grade teacher, Ms. Pam Hester, and she's going to share with you. She has been at the school a few years. And then also a fresh set of eyes to assistant principal, Ms. Jessica Estep. She's only been there since August. And she's going to share with you what she has encountered at the 63-year-old Jefferson Thank you. Thank you, sir. Pam Hester. Can you state your name and address? And you have three minutes, ma'am. <laughs> I'm Pam Hester and I live at 724 West Stepper Street and I've been a part of Jefferson Elementary for 37 years. A student taught there, my boys went there and they're now teachers themselves. And I'm, I thank you for your service and I really mean that because we're in the same boat, we're servants as well. And when I, I'm hearing all this talk about we don't need a new school, we don't need a new school. I live in an old house and I love old things. But I also know that we serve a population of children that are, we have 70% on free and reduced lunch. And so many of our children, you see what, what our city dwellings look like, a bunch of our, our properties. And these children want to learn and they deserve a place that is clean and bright and heated in the morning. Did any of you all have to go to a job this morning that it wasn't warm until 10 o'clock? We had to keep our coats on this morning <laughs> until 10 o'clock because the boiler system has to heat the water to he make the heat for our children to be warm. And I think every day I go to that place willing and, and loving to teach. And we're a group of servants who don't complain because the wrong group of people is being asked to come over and over again and complain because that's not what we do. We teach. And this year we've taught really hard to children who have chosen to be at home for their safety, to the children that come to the building for our safety. We're there. I'm there till late hours trying to do my job. I don't want to complain. I don't want to use my energy or my time to complain. I hope that you will trust the people that have been elected to do their jobs. We're doing our job. We're not paid to complain. Our school board has been elected to do their job. 
and they did it well. They've been in our school multiple times to see what we're talking about. I'd love to see how many of you have actually been inside our school building to know what you're actually dealing with besides just hearsay. Would you mind raising your hand if you've been in my building where I teach every day in the last year? So it really is important that as I see it in your job as a county commission to fund what we as our job have brought to you and brought to our school board, they've done their job to present what they found, the facts that they have found. Now I would ask that you do your job and fund what we've all presented to you as a need for our county. To me, I, I think that's what your job is. And as far as I understand, taxes won't be raised to build this new school. So I hope that you'll consider the things I've said. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jessica Eastell, can you please give us your name and address and you have three minutes. I'm Jessica Eastell, I live at 996 Cedar Trace Lane in Morristown. Um, good evening. As Mr. Day said, my name is Jessica Eastep and I'm the assistant principal at Jefferson Elementary School. I've been blessed to be in this role since July of 2020 and during a short span of time I quickly realized the dedication to students at JES runs deep. When students arrive each morning, they are greeted with a smile, a good morning, and a have a great day. Though those smiles may be covered by masks this year, Nothing can cover the love that we have for each student and the desire that we have for each to learn to the greatest of their ability. In its current state, staff have turned JES into a humble place to learn. Through each turn of the building, student work lines the hallways, motivational phrases adorn the ceilings, and bright colors make the walls a welcoming place to embrace students. Classrooms engage students in learning, and students give back 100% each day of what we as a staff put in. I say all of this knowing that in reality, so many have worked for so long to simply make the current building of Jefferson Elementary School function. In my time there, which admittedly has been brief, we have faced problems with the following. HVAC, plumbing, sewer, improper draining, windows, doors, flooring, leaks, and water damage, just to name a few. This generic list does not include the specific nature of repairs, replacements, and renovations that would need to occur to make the current building of Jefferson Elementary School fully <coughs> functional to the greatest extent. Our students and staff deserve this. In education, we challenge our teachers to push students to dig for answers, to not skim the surface, but to work with them to get to the root of the problem or the topic, and then find a solution. My request is this. I'm asking for Jefferson County Commissioners to dig deep to not simply skim the surface of understanding the issues at the current building of JES. To please realize that it is time to invest in a new building for Jefferson Elementary School. I wholeheartedly understand the fiscal responsibility and investment this decision entails. This is not something I view lightly. However, I do not view our students' safety, education, or access to a functioning facility lightly either. We owe our current 436 students, our students who are waiting to enroll, and our future little elks the best we have to offer so that they can go forward into our community and invest back in us we invested in them. Please fully and openly consider approving the proposal to build a new building for Jefferson Elementary School. From 1958 until now, the current building has blessed countless students with an education founded on service, compassion, and a strong learning standard. Please know this will continue and we will fight each day for our students to receive the education they deserve. I'm grateful to be able to serve the students and stakeholders in our district Thank and you. our students and staff are grateful to each of you. Thank you. Thanks so much. What we're going to do on our county commissioners, those of you who have emails to read, uh, Mr. Hearn is going to say that and we'll do it like request to speak and if you'll um, so if you'll hit request to speak, if you have an email to read, and that way with one request to speak. Uh, Mark Shreve. 
you have three minutes, sir, if you'll please give the name and the address of your this is comments are from David Seal, 730 Sam Martin Road, Andridge, Tennessee. Mr. Chairman and members of the board, once upon a time, a Jefferson County Commissioner told me the following, quote, if we could somehow eliminate the county debt, we, Jefferson County, would have the financial resources to do great things for the county. If the crippling debt could be eliminated, we could realize enough extra revenue to build the equivalent of a Patriot Academy side school every two and a half years, unquote. We can dramatically reduce the county debt if we exercise financial discipline and take advantage of the upcoming changes in the debt service fund beginning in 2023. Education services could be one of the main beneficiaries of reduced debt, including major school renovation. As of October 2020, Jefferson County had accumulated $17.8 million in various reserve funds that could be used for school renovation expenses. Using a portion of that money for the desperate needs of Jefferson Elementary School would be a good alternative to taking the risk of adding more debt. I would also ask you to take a critical look at the renovation cost estimates that have been presented by the schools before you commit to more debt. Based on previous projects and regional elementary school renovation cost numbers, the estimates for the Jefferson Elementary appear to be heavily skewed. With over 1,160 student withdrawals from Jefferson County Schools from August to February of this year, and over 800 students attending private, homeschool, and non-public schools, and nearly 900 students choosing distant learning, the national trend of declining public school enrollment has reached Jefferson County. The National Review article that I shared with you recently is one of the many indicators that reflect the fear that parents face concerning the federalization of public schools, including fear of political indoctrination of children and clearly coincides with the school enrollment trend that we see in our country. Your decision tonight will impact the county taxpayers for decades. Please consider fiscal constraint, restraint. Thank you. Thank you. I have a motion, Mr. Solomon. I'll make a motion to fund the Jefferson Elementary at $20 million. I second. Second is on the <laughs> Thank you. We have a motion and a second. The motion is to fund the building of Jefferson Elementary School not to exceed $20 million, or how are you saying that? $20 million? $20 million. $20 million. $20 million. Second by Ms. Langley. Motion is open to discussion. Please hit request to speak if you'd like to address the motion. Mr. Douglas. You mean know, I'm the only one that's got anything to say here? <laughs> You're still on get six minutes. I'm sorry. You're still on get six minutes. Five, six. Okay. Well, okay, my first point is, and I'm trying to remember back, I'm starting to remember coming up here, when we done White Pine Elementary School, the estimated cost of it was, I think, $223 a square foot. Well, this one comes in at $190 a square foot. Building materials are higher right now than they ever have been, so I don't, I don't get the math on that. I don't understand that. That's the first thing I don't understand. The next thing is, when we started this, we were talking about $30 million, and we are going to do two schools. We are going to do, and I think Piedmont was involved in that. And I wonder how many students, teachers, faculty, staff, whatever, from Piedmont could come up here and make the same arguments that have been made for Jefferson Elementary School. And, you know, Mr. Pott's done it great job of putting together our debt structure and everything and as the lady stated this can't be funded without a tax rate but make no mistake about it this does not stop here this is the first shot to be fired and there's another one loaded in the chamber right after this one this is not going to be the only debt that this county incurs and I don't want to misquote 
Mr. Potts, but I believe he said, Jessica, you may have helped me out here. Did he not say in last week's work session that Jefferson County could incur another $60 million in debt and still remain financially sound? I don't recall that specific comment, so I don't want to say yes or no on that. Okay, but I don't want to misquote it, but I think he said we could go up to another $60 million in debt. And I have no doubt that whatever we can string out is where we're headed. This is not. So, as I said, I appreciate what Mr. Potts and the whole finance office done with not being able, we can do this without raising taxes, excuse me, but we can do this, but we can't do everything that's going to need done at Rush Strong. Everything that's going to be doing, need done at Piedmont. As Mr. Carmichael said, we voted, what, what is it, two or three times to put windows in Piedmont now? And I mean, all the problems that Piedmont didn't heal themselves. And yes, Piedmont's in mine and Mr. Patterson's district, and I'm not just taking up for that reason, but I, that's my job, too, is to take up for them. So, you know, yeah, we're fixing one problem, but we're ignoring or acting like we don't have other problems, but they're going to come along as soon as this one's done, folks, and it doesn't stop here. I'm not saying that this is a good idea. I'm not saying it's a bad idea. It's just I have a hard time spending $20 million right now because everybody can say what they want to. Oil prices are going up. Everything's going to go up. Uh, and it is an uncertain economy right now. We're running into shortages of everything. Electrical components are hard to come by right now. If you don't believe me, go, go look at the shells. I deal with electric suppliers all the time. You can't even get a, half the time you have trouble getting a breaker or a breaker box or anything. So, I'm just not real comfortable spending $20 million, although it's, it's not, it is my money and it's not my money, but I'm treating it like it is my money. And I sure wouldn't want to be building a house right now. So, this is the same thing as doing, as building a new house, your personal house. And I'm not saying we don't need to do something, I'm not saying that, but there's several needs that have to be addressed. And for everybody to come in here and think this is the only one and this is gonna stop here, that's a fallacy, folks. We're headed for, I'm gonna say, yeah, I can say it's going to another 40 to $50 million in debt here over the next five years. Or we can get by for a little while, and as Mr. Seal pointed out, Fund it. We paid three million. Was it three million dollars in interest we paid last year? Something like that. That's three million dollars, folks, to a bunch of paper shufflers in the financial industry that are getting rich off of counties like this and people like us. And if you can't tell, yeah, that one sticks a little bit. So. I just want everybody to think about spending three million dollars a year for nothing but interest. You know, paying a dime. Well, we are paying on differential, but you're paying. It's costing you three million dollars a year. With that, I yield my final nine seconds, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, sir. We'll put you back, Mr. Carmichael. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I wouldn't be that. Normally, I like to be dead last, but I guess it's my turn. But uh, we need to get to the. We need to get to the nuts and bolts of the whole situation. There ain't no doubt your school needs attention. Needs fixing. The new car won't get you to work no faster and older than will. There's a word that's been left out of all these conversations. Now, I'm going to do my job now. You asked me to do my job, so I'm going to do it for you. And the point is, it's called maintenance. It's a new word to a lot of people in this room that's never heard of it before. It's kind of like changing the oil in your car. 
Am I for or against of the, of the school? We'll see. But the, the, the point that we got to speak about tonight is, what's the smart thing to do? How, do we, how did we get where we're at? And what safeguard do we have? A brand new building is no better than an old building. The trick to it is taking care of it. I haven't heard one person come in front of this commission since 2010 and said one word about, okay, we need to get on these schools. If the doorknob's broke, if the wall's got a crack in it, let's get it fixed. It don't matter if it's a new building or an old building. We got to talk about the nuts and bolts of the whole situation. We got brand new buildings in this county right now that ain't a bit better than your school. They're just as bad and the roof probably leaks worse. Sewer so systems don't work. See, new stuff has the same problems of old stuff. You still gotta pay somebody to fix it. Now, when we get right down here to the bottom of this, I'm in the construction industry, been in it my whole life. Right now, I couldn't think of a worse time to start trying to make or build anything. I have contractors that have called me all day today trying to figure out how they're going to get enough money together to buy their material. You cannot get a price on material today that will last more than four hours. Three contractors, three licensed contractors all said the same thing. They're having to pay for a kid to build a house up front to lock in a price. Now, me, I ain't got a crystal ball. And I can't say, hey, next December when this school starts to get built, We'll be going to be at money lots. Well, I think we know how the rest home worked it out. I think they're about two and a half million dollars in the hole. They thought they had a price figured out. But when OSB board goes from $17 a sheet to $49 a sheet, who's figured that into this? Who's got a crystal ball that knows by the time you start to build this building how much your cost overrun's going to be? We're not just talking about $20 million. I think the original number is probably closer to what it's going to cost because nobody knows what this economy is fixing to do. That's the sad part. That's where, they, that's where it comes in, the physical responsibility. I'm not against you having a new school, but I gotta pay the bill at the end of the day. So we gotta make sure that we can afford to pay that bill. <coughs> you gotta say, hey, if it comes in $5 million over budget, then what? How you gonna explain that? You can't. This pandemic and everything that's going on right now, you know, there's a lot of people ain't doing too well. There's a lot of people worried to death. I think I'm, there's no telling how many emails I got in my phone right now to this very thing that we're talking about. And I'm trying to be fair with everybody about it. But the point is, until we have a comprehensive maintenance program for our oldest building, just like our new building, and we start taking care of everything as it comes up. If there's a busted door, put a new in up. You know, you got to get things done. And if the heat wasn't left on over the weekend, you can't cool a school off and warm it back up in 30 minutes. So everybody had to wear their coat today, think the guy turned the heat off last week. So whoever who was the last guy out the door turned the heat off, have a talk with them about that. But the point is, the point is, we got to take better care of what we do have. If we got a lot or if we just got a little, you got to take better care of it. That's my point. So if we're going to build a new school, I want to know how we're going to take care of it to keep it from getting into the shape of the school you got now. Now, sir, how many years did you say you worked there almost 20 years that that building ain't had anything principal, done to it? Been the principal nine and uh, taught there for 10. Right. There ain't been no comprehensive anything done to that building. You know, if you can get 19 years out of a building and not spend a bunch of money on it, that's blessings what that is. Because it should have done fell down by now. I'm talking, okay, just hold up. Oh, okay. yes, but the but point is, know. point is, here's where we're at and how we got here. We got to take care of it. You can buy a brand new car. If you don't ever change your oil in it, it'll be junk in about a year or so. It'll lock up and that'll be the end of that. So we ain't a bit better off. But the point is, if you're going to put 20 million in, you need to be sure you can do it for 20 million. I'm not sure of that. Nobody can tell you. There is not a soul in this room can tell you the exact dollar that the is fixing the couch. So when you say I do, you're married to it. I rest. Thanks, sir, Mr. Reed. There's a couple things I would really like to say concerning this. Uh, 
first of all, I'm very concerned about the safety in Jefferson Elementary School. I know what is there. I've been through it more than once. I appreciate the teachers, but I would like you to listen to this. I've taken the needs assessment that the school board presented in October of 2019. I've looked at the new plan that has been presented to build this new school. And Principal Day, I appreciate you, sir. But you made the comment, I believe that it was something like this, and if I'm wrong, please correct me. Uh, the students in Jefferson Elementary deserve the same as the other students in uh, Jefferson County. I agree with that statement. I'd like to share this with you. I've taken all the figures and crunched the numbers. This is the total money we need in Jefferson County to make sure that Piedmont, Rush Strong, Talbot, Jefferson Middle School, Maury Middle School, uh, Andrew Elementary. This is from the Lewis's group recommendation 2019. Up, updated recommended improvements estimate was $48,817,988. Updated additional improvements estimate $45,174,304. That's a total updated renovation of 93,992,292, including the 19,950 been re requested for Jefferson Elementary. That's 113, almost 114 million dollars. Do you understand why? And I won't speak for the other commissioners, but it's for myself, I have to listen to the constituents and to the people that I have talked to and 90 plus percent we can shake our head no but 90 percent of the people I have talked to have said no don't do this because of COVID because of their fear because of the money that they're making are making not making because of political and because of economic I'm being honest with you I would like to do that for all the schools it's hard enough to get 20 million because we're going to be 90 plus million dollars in debt, not counting the interest. Uh, and looking at the remodeling and renovation of Jefferson Elementary, I think that the cost that has been presented to us is skewed high. And I have numbers and I have no problem talking to anyone. Uh, just the cost increase for a new school from what was given in 2019 to now is 37% construction cost. That's the starting point for a new building. Renovation cost increase that has been shown is 76%. It's hard for me to wrap around those numbers. I know how much you desire it. I wish that we could pull that money out and do $100 million. But the majority of people that have called me, emailed me, tell me no. Thank you very much. Ms. Langley. Well, I didn't even realize I punched. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll go. <laughs> um, I think a lot of us have spoken, a lot of the citizens have spoken to the finances, and yet I wonder how many have had access to the extensive comprehensive report that has been given to us uh, by way of our financial director, who by the way, I trust. Um, but he has gotten some outside sources who've also looked at our county finances, who have assured us that this can be done without a tax increase. Folks, I trust people who have done more research than I have done, uh, than most of us have done. I also believe that many people who do not see the need have not mm -hmm. toured the building. And that is, maybe I'm telling you more than I know there. Maybe everybody in this courtroom, or maybe all of our citizens have, afforded, have asked Mr. Day for a tour. Perhaps you have. I hope you have. But I don't believe you can honestly go through that building and see what our public school teachers deal with day in and day out. Dr. Johnston sent to us commissioners back on Tuesday, I believe, um, 
a con I, I think it was about 200 pages. Believe it or not, I sat down one night and read most of them. <laughs> Do you know that one day back in February, school had to be dismissed because raw sewage mm -hmm. was coming up through the floors of six classrooms in that school. That's unconscionable. That's unforgivable. Maybe we haven't maintained shame on us. But let's start today with a new commitment to our county children, our county teachers, good use of taxpayer money. We are faced with a situation that we cannot ignore. Something's got to be done. And Mr. Douglas, I think, maybe it was Mr. Carmichael, just spoke to how building costs are up. All of these figures, 19 million, 17 million, may be different. But do you know what? I'd rather go a little bit over 19 million and get me a brand new, spanking, shiny new school building that has probably a lifespan of 50 years, rather than go over 17 million and have the lifespan of a 20 year roof. That doesn't make sense. As for school enrollment, class sizes fluctuate all the time, all the time. In regard to children leaving our public schools for private schools, I offer this. We are a county of a mass, not a mass of wealthy people. We are the bulk of just good old Janes and Jims. And we, our folks, the mass of our folks, can't afford private school. Some can, most can't. We will always need public schools. Some among us would have you believe that in a few years we're gonna have three students sitting in every classroom. I don't believe that. I believe it is imperative we provide public schools which afford our children safe, healthy, positive environments for education. I don't like spending money any better than anybody else. But I do believe that our school board, Dr. Johnston, our financial director, have done their homework. They know more than all 21 of us put together. And they're telling us what we need to do. I do not believe there is, oh, and I don't think, I don't think our population's gonna decline. I think Jefferson County's gonna continue to grow and with it is gonna come kids, little ones, needing good classrooms. And thank God for good teachers. We've got them in every school in this county. I think the best use of our taxpayer dollar is put toward our county schools children and their families and good environments for an education. There's nothing we could do better with our tax money. Thank you, Ms. Langworth. Mr. Bale. I look at the numbers, I listen to what Jimmy said, I agree on a whole lot with Jimmy on this. We've got to maintain it. Yeah, Tommy just took this position, when was it? 18 months. 18 months ago, he's given us reports on roofs at different schools, or talked about the maintenance that needs to be done. They've been after it really hard and done a good job. We're looking at 19.9 million for a new school. Last week they said exactly what Edna said, we probably never agree on anything. <laughs> but because she's on this end and I'm on this end. But anyway, we we are looking at 19.9 million. I don't like the idea of even spending half. I'll be honest with you, I really don't. But if we're going to spend 17.9 to refurbish a school, and they did say it last week, structurally, they don't know if the school will last mm -hmm. longer than the warranty on the roof of 20 years. Are we being physically resistant? fiscally responsible to spend 17.9 for something that might last, let's say, 30 years? Or do we need to go ahead and, and spend a $2 million difference on the new school that they said will last at least 50 years? 
And the one at 63 year old school, I did not realize it was that old. But more than likely, we got better materials than we did in 63 years ago. And it'll last longer than that if we maintain it. And, and, and I'm 100% behind on that. We have to maintain it. It's not physically responsible to spend 17 dollars on something that you don't know for the last 10, 15 years or what. If it didn't make it as long as the roof does. That's my opinion. That's all I've got to say. Request to speak. Okay, you have First of all, I'd just like to thank the staff and the students because I too think you deserve better. I think you've been putting up with this situation for years. Put oh, oh, your back on um, the um. Okay. Sorry. First of all, I just wanted to thank the students and the staff because I do think they deserve better and they've been dealing with this situation for several years. Um, it's, in my opinion, it's the school board's job to oversee the prioritization of needs in the county schools. And they've told us that Jefferson Elementary is a top, top priority. And we'll always have a list of needs for all of our schools. Because we have a lot of schools. We have a lot of kids going through those schools. And maintenance will always be something we need to keep up with. I think we are focusing on it more. I think the school board and the school system is trying to get the schools in better um, shape. Um, my job is to decide if we can fund it. So I ask myself, is new construction for Jefferson Elementary a better investment much for the taxpayers or renovation? And I think in this situation, the building is in a state of probably disrepair or a repair that's going to cost you more than what you're going to get back. So I look at life expectancy and longevity of the building. And I just don't think renovation is a good use of taxpayers' dollars. Uh, because the interest rates are low, even though times are uncertain, I think with the interest rates being as low as they are, we're better off um, borrowing now to do this project than waiting later when the interest rates might be higher. Uh, and just like Jimmy said, I've got a driveway sitting full of cars that have almost 200,000 miles on them. Well, I can try to keep the maintenance up, but it comes to the point, eventually, I'd be better off to buy something new where I have um, warranty, mm -hmm. and I know it's going to last me several years. So I support the um, new construction, and I just want to say thank you. Request to speak. Mr. Chairman. Sir, my gadget don't work, so <laughs> I'm not the question. Talk the question. We'll ask the vote on the question. Is there any objection? Any objection? If there's not. No objection. We'll vote. Um, some of you can vote on your electronic device. Mr. Herndon will have to log other people's <coughs> vote. So, yes, if you're in favor of the motion, in case you forgot, the motion was to build a Jefferson Elementary School for $20 million. If you're in favor of that, vote yes. If you're opposed, vote no. After those of you who can, lobby vote. Yeah, let's go. There was no objection to the question. Mr. Chairman, before you pull all the votes off of there, I want to make a statement. My spouse is employed in the school system. This in no way has any impact upon her. My decision has any impact upon her working, nor does her working have any impact on my decision. Just, make it, just noted for the record that my spouse does work for the school system. He could say it better than I could, but I'm going to think <laughs> Talk about your spouse, just be careful what you say. Mr. Ted Bice. Can't be held against. Mr. Fagan, so three. Okay. Mr. Seals? Yes. Mr. Walker? 
Ms. Thomas. Yes. Motion fails. Twelve to seven. Before you leave, we'd like to thank your teachers, your staff, and the school board for your hard work. We're glad that you could be with us here tonight. Carlos Perry. You got if you got any other discussion on this, you got to do it now. If you don't, I mean, you can go on, but I mean, there's, they still can discuss the new bill based on your topic. Yeah, if there's any more discussion on the bill, the vote tonight has failed. Is there any more discussion? Mr. Chair. Sir, Mr. Fagan. Can this not be brought back onto an agenda at a future meeting? Yes. 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 Just failed tonight. Any others, Mr. I don't know which one. Chris, how do you go first? In our next work session, you can ask for it to be added to the agenda. April the 9th. Y'all keep up with it. The 12th, uh, April the 9th or 12th, whenever the next. In the next work session, next scheduled quarterly work well, session. 12th is the work session, 19th is the work session. 12th is the work session. You can put it on, be discussed, and be voted on on the 19th. Mr. Carmen. I just want to make a motion to table it for July meeting. And we got one in July. We have a motion to table it for July meeting. We have a second. Second. Two seconds. Mr. Coleman. Okay. That way you've got a better idea. And I'll speak to you. I got a second. Just this meeting. Just this meeting. Just this meeting. Okay. And I'll pay for it for July. Okay. You can postpone it. Okay. Postpone it. Uh, I have the wrong word. I, you, I want to postpone it. Mr. Coleman. To the July meeting. Are you okay with postponement? Yes. So you're about to agree motion in a second? Yes. To postpone. Discussion. Could you let me go ahead? I'd like to speak to that. The reason that I would like to do this is I would like to see what the atmosphere of the economy is by then. <coughs> to where if we want to bring this back up, and I think we do, we can actually sit down and figure out where material cost is going to be, and you're going to find out that you can work some other things out. That's why, that's why I made the motion. Other discussion? Mr. Does you look, look, I'm going to go ahead. Eight before beauty. <laughs> he just doesn't have a perfect discussion, does he? I, I, I completely agree, with Mr. Carmichael. Amazing as that sounds. But we're going to have to do something. We all sitting here know we're going to have to do something. Yes, John Neal, motion to postpone is not debatable. Not debatable, but amendable. But amendable. Anyone want to amend the postponement? Here, you know, thank you. Right here. And I'm just not sure exactly how to say this, but I, at that time, I'd like to, to set a plan for the fairgrounds relative to the, the agricultural structure that is there on the site. <laughs> You're requesting that a plan be brought for the fairground from You're speaking of the metal building, right? The entire facility, grounds, I heard the comment that we were moving out of the well, you'll have to bring that up in the work session. This motion here is just to postpone for the July. I'd like to amend that motion. Oh, we have a motion to amend. I'd like to amend it to April. I think this is important enough. We 
need to keep talking about this and we need to work out. I, as Mr. Douglas has said, we have to do something. I said the other night for me. Doing I'll that. you get a second. I'll I'll second. second. All right, you got to go in. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. I think this is important enough that we we have to keep talking about it. We cannot put it off in July. Uh, we've got to address the issues and and move forward. Doing nothing is not an option. Motion to amend the motion from July to April. Postpone. <coughs> Other amendments? If not, or, or. you hit the motion button there. If I had one, I would. You don't have one? No, sir. I can do that. <coughs> So this is the motion on the amendment. The original motion was to postpone to July. The amendment is to postpone to April. So it'll be moving from July to our quarterly meeting next month in April. That's the amendment. And that's what you're voting on this time. So if you're in favor of moving the postponement from July until April, you vote yes. If not, you vote no. You're voting on April. If you vote on April, you vote yes. If you don't, vote no. There's a general meeting in July? Yeah, we have a quarter, first quarterly meeting in July. 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 It's July. 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 So the motion has been amended to, I'm to, say, to postpone until April our next meeting, our quarterly meeting. Any other amendments? No amendments, so we'll be voting on the uh, motion as amended. And the motion is to postpone until April. This puts it on the April agenda. April agenda. Work session and regular meeting. So, so if you're in favor of voting, in favor of uh, postponing it to next month, you vote yes. If not, you vote no. Passed by majority, so this has been postponed to the April meeting. Twelve seven. Other discussion tonight. If not, let me re let me remind you that we have executive session <coughs> immediately following. So as soon as the courtroom is clear, we will go into executive session. Mark, Thank you for your Mark. patience, sir. Go ahead. Wait, wait, it won't take long. One thing, this is not an all or nothing on a bit. We've not even talked about the remodel. I, the biggest problem I had with it was the numbers didn't add up to what they originally gave us and what they are now. How the difference in the remodel went way up. But, I mean, a complete remodel is, is we've not even, we've not even talked about that. You know, we, is it just a new school or not? Is that what we're, we're talking about? There's not even a remodel on the table. That's what I don't understand. I thought that was an option. That's what you can bring up at the work session. The, based on what the mayor made the call for okay. this meeting, if you read your call, it says for a new school yeah. for the presentation. So we can't discuss anything that's not within the call gotcha. tonight. Okay. Executive session following. Thank you for your uh, patience. A motion to adjourn will be in order. Second. Anybody opposed? State of the legislature.